Kislev has long stood as the bulwark of the North, defending the old world against the dark horrors that lie beyond. In this endless fight, there is no more effective or iconic force than the squadrons of winged lancers who charge heroically into the moors of the foe. Through their toils is the world's end kept at bay. This video was sponsored by Magellan TV. They're an awesome documentary streaming service run by filmmakers with a selection of over 3,000 videos to choose from among the categories of history, science, nature, space, and more. When it comes to history documentaries, Magellan TV has the richest and most varied content anywhere. Ancient, modern, current, war, biography, and even related genres like science and crime which are historical in nature. For some historical grounding on this episode, I highly recommend watching Vienna, the Golden Apple, which covers the real story of the Polished Wing Hussars at the famous 1683 Siege of Vienna. Magellan TV is compatible with Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, Google Play, and iOS, which means you can watch it anytime, anywhere, on your television, laptop, or mobile device. Sign up today to get 30% off an annual membership, which starts with a two-week free trial. That's less than $350 a month for access to thousands of documentaries. The offer is available for both new and returning users, so be sure to click the link in the description below, or go to try.magellantv.com slash Invicta. Enjoy! The winged lancers hail from the realm of Kislev, mankind's northernmost bulwark against the hordes of chaos. It is a land of transition, stretching from the temperate forests of the Empire in the south to the frost-bitten steppes of the Troll Country to the north, and from the misty expanse of the Sea of Claws in the west to the towering peaks of the World's Edge Mountains in the east. Those huddled along the southern, more civilized edge of Kislev are able to farm, build stone structures, and develop a more settled society. It is here that one can find the bulk of the realm's major population centers, including the capital of Kislev City and the port hub of Erengrad. As for the inhabitants of these lands, many, especially among the nobility, trace their lineage to the Gospodor people, who migrated to the area in the 1500s IC, displacing or coming to rule the native Ungol and Robsman tribes. It is from these core territories of the southern and western oblast that the Tsars and the central government of Kislev rule. Further beyond are the wilder, more dangerous regions of the eastern and northern oblast. Here, clusters of settlements and forts can be found clinging defiantly to small pockets of hospitable land amidst the ice and snow. Despite their troubles, some have managed to grow strong through control of important land and river trade routes. The grand city of Prague is one such prime example. However, this proves quite the exception in the northern territories. Most people here have given up any attempts at settled life and survive as wandering nomads on the open steppe. It is among these folk that one can find the bulk of the Ungol populations. Yet, while there may be cause for division across the various elements of Kislev, all are bonded by the hardships of the realm. This is especially true when it comes to enduring the incursions from Norska or the dreaded Chaos Wastes. Facing such existential threats, the men and women of the North put aside their differences and find common cause in repelling the outsiders. They sacrifice much in these wars with little appreciation given to them by the nations to their south. Another shared bond among the Northerners is their proud cavalry tradition, which hails back to the days when their ancestors mastered the Great Eastern Steppe. This horseman's blood ran deep in the warrior Tsar Alexander I, who was said to have augmented the dreadful charge of his steed with winged banners. Their howls proved so fierce that even Chaos worshippers turned to flight. Having won countless victories and forged the first alliance with the Empire in the early 17th century, he would set an example that countless Kislevites would seek to follow. Its elite riders would also choose to adorn their horses with elaborate winged banners. 
Soon, these units came to form an essential part of the Kislevite military as powerful shock cavalry forces. By the early 19th century, regiments of winged lancers not only filled the bulk of the army's cavalry wings, but also served as bodyguards to the Tsars themselves. In 1810, Gospodor IV would send one such unit on an expedition to the World's Edge Mountains, where their leader slew a griffon, adding its plumage to his banner. For this act and his men's upstanding bravery, the unit became known as the Griffon Legion. To this day, they stand as the best of the best when it comes to the winged lancers of Kislev. Let us now take a closer look at the equipment of these proud riders of the north. As cavalrymen, a lancer's most important possession is his horse. These Kislevite steeds are smaller than other Old World mounts, but are notably tougher. They have thicker manes, broader chests, are more resistant to the elements, and can survive on very little sustenance. A proper warhorse will have been bred to display the best of these qualities, and often comes with a vicious attitude and bad temper. Riders of the North, however, will have little issue taming such creatures, and may in fact delight in their rowdiness. Some even seek to accentuate their steeds' ferocity, painting them in bold patterns of red and white. When it comes time for battle, a rider will mount their horse with a saddle and stirrup. For protection against the cold, they will wear warm boots, pants, a long sleeve shirt, gloves, and often a cloak. These will have been lovingly provided by their family back home. For defense in combat, a soldier will equip themselves according to their means and local tradition. Most can afford at least a set of chainmail, while the richest, often from the south, will don ornate plated chest pieces. Pauldrons might also be worn to protect their shoulders, while additional armor may be added down the length of one's arms. Meanwhile, the head will be protected with a domed helmet. More elaborate pieces offer a protective face mask. A rider's last major piece of protective gear will be a round shield. These are traditionally made of wood boards nailed together and reinforced by metal bands and rims. Their faces may be covered with leather and are often painted with typical Kislevite imagery of bears. Finally, the most iconic piece of kit to be worn will be the rider's winged banner. These tall poles are attached to the soldier's back, extending up several feet above their head. The banners ranged from simple carved poles to jewel-encrusted works of art. Attached to this main structural backbone are hollowed bone decorations and long feathers which emit shrill, eerie shrieks as the wind passes through them. On the offense, the primary weapon of these mounted warriors is their lance. The largest variants typically range from 15 to 20 feet in length while shorter versions are roughly 10 to 15 feet. Both will have a rounded handguard and may sometimes sport pennant flags at their ends. As backups or for close quarters combat, a lancer will also carry a saber, mace or hammer. With this image in mind, let us now discuss what it takes to become a winged lancer. As should be quite apparent by their gear, it requires someone of sufficient means to meet their expected equipment standards. Thus it is that most lancers come from the mid-ranks of Kislev's nobility, known as the boyars. Historically, this has been a hereditary status passed on between generations of gospodors. They are powerful figures within their respective communities, with large families and groups of followers. Boyar sons or members of their retinue are usually the ones who sign up to fight in the cavalry. However, doing so isn't such a simple matter. New recruits must first complete a special ritual. This involves venturing out into the wilderness with just a bow, five arrows, and a dagger. Upon reaching the wild, they then have five days to catch and kill an eagle. Should they return successful, the recruit will have proven themselves worthy to ride with the lancers and may use the bird's feather to adorn their own banner. 
Once inducted, a new Lancer will join the muster each spring, ready to ride out with the veterans. This group will then venture out to complete their missions for the campaigning season. As the men depart, the townsfolk will weep as their sons, brothers, cousins and fathers ride past. If it is a bad year, few will return, and even a good year will see its fair share of tragic losses. For this reason, the winged lancers are known as the Riders of the Dead and mourned as such, at least until their survival has been confirmed with their return. The departure of the winged lancers is an event that will take place across Kislev. Almost all communities field at least one squadron of cavalry known as a rota. Typically, these range from a few dozen to perhaps one or two hundred men. Each rota will be commanded by a rota master who hails from the upper echelons of his community. Serving as such an officer is highly prestigious and often serves as a stepping stone for those who will become atamans or chiefs of their village. Often these rotors will act as highly maneuverable, independent forces who venture out to protect their home regions. Though relatively few in number, they are able to punch high above their weight class using both hit-and-run tactics and decisive charges. The lancers intercept warbands, chase off monsters, and overall ensure that the lands are kept safe. Sometimes multiple rotors may be required to see off particularly tenacious foes. If the threat is sufficiently large, the matter will be escalated beyond the regional nobility. In the case of massive invasions, for instance, the Tsars will call the banner of many communities, pulling together a massive force of rotors, which now form into polks or battalions. Side by side, one will see the true diversity of the Lancers. The northern squadrons will come dressed as the nomads do, with heavy facial hair, top knots, and fur lined charms to ward off evil. Meanwhile, the southern squadrons will be more akin to Empire Knights, sporting pennants, decorated armor, and great animal pelts. And of course, it would be hard to miss the proud men of the Griffon Legion, sworn to answer the call of their Tsar or Tsarina. Together, under one banner, these will ride out to trample the foe beneath their hooves. There would be many times throughout history when the winged lancers proved themselves to be the saviors of the realm. However, one moment stands head and shoulders above the rest. It occurred at the height of the Great War against Chaos during the siege of the city of Kislev. Here, the forces of order were locked in a bitter fight against a foe who had now surrounded them, ready to crush the last army in its path. However, from atop the Hill of Heroes charged hundreds of lancers, banners screaming, diving deep into the enemy ranks from the rear. It is here that the tide of chaos was broken with a thunderous hammer blow. That day, the old world was saved from the ruinous powers of the Dark Gods. But all know that they shall return, and when they do, the winged lancers of Kislev shall ride out to meet them again. It's been a ton of fun exploring the world of Warhammer fantasy, so do let us know if this is something you would be interested in seeing more of in the future. What units would you like to see covered next? A huge thanks to the patrons for funding the channel and to the researchers, writers and artists for making this episode possible. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content and check out these related videos. See you in the next one.